Broadcasting System presents The Mysterious Traveler. Written, produced, and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Colvin. And starring two of radio's foremost personalities, Bryna Rayburn and Lyle Sudrow, in Stranger in the House. This is the mysterious traveler inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, that it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable, if you can, as we follow the nerve-wracking adventures of a young couple in search of a home. It's the story I call... Stranger in the house. The scene, the small village of Woodford in Vermont. It's nine o'clock in the evening, and the main street of the village is deserted. A car comes speeding through the village and with a squeal of its brakes, comes to a stop before the home of Dr. Samuel Stewart. A young woman, obviously distraught, gets out from behind the wheel of the car and hurries up the walk to the doctor's home. Oh, Dr. Stewart? Yes, yes, won't you come in? Thank you. Doctor, you... You've got to help me. I, I can't stand it anymore. Well, of course I'll help you. Here, let me have your coat. All right. Now, now, what appears to be wrong? I don't know how to tell you about it. You'll think I'm insane, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm sure you're not. Now, why not start from the beginning and tell me what's troubling you? Well, I, I suppose it all began the day my husband and I left this village to to look at a house in the country that was for sale. Yes, I I can recall how happy we were as we drove through the countryside. Oh, Roger. Darling, I do hope this will be the house we're searching for. <laughs> oh, look, we're coming to the old colonial graveyard the agent told us about. He said the house was a quarter of a mile beyond. Yeah, that's right. At the end of this curve, there should be a small bridge over a stream. A small bridge over a stream? Mm-hmm. Look, there it is. <laughs> now, the house should be just a little beyond. Roger, I don't recall the agent having mentioned the bridge. Why, well, he must have, darling. How else would I have known it was there? Now, look, there's the house. Oh, oh Roger, isn't it beautiful? Uh -huh. Oh, and what a view it commands. Right, now, look, Jane, you mustn't get too excited about the place. It's probably all fallen to ruins inside. Oh, not to, darling. <laughs> you can see it's one of those, those early colonial houses built to endure for centuries. Oh, it's just what we've been dreaming. <laughs> this place certainly looks wild and desolate, doesn't it? Well, naturally. The agent said it's been empty for years. Come on. Uh-huh. Anyway, what do I do with that key now? Roger, look at this old engraved plate set in the wall. Hmm? I can barely make it out. Whitford Manor. Oh, that's a lovely name. Yeah, here we are. Here's the key. <laughs> Whitford Manor. Oh, I know I'm going to love this place. There you are. After you, Mrs. Barton. Oh, it's so cold and clammy in here. Yes, yes, but look at that staircase, that beautiful staircase and those ceiling beams. Janie, honey, you were right. This place was built to endure. This house is in wonderful condition. Yes. So it seems. And, and, and it's, it's just the size house we need, with four rooms upstairs. Four rooms upstairs? Mm hmm. Oh, how do you know, Roger, that the agent never mentioned how many rooms the house had? He didn't. Well, there's only one way to find out, then. Let's go upstairs and look. Come on, Jenny. Well, these stairs are as sound as the day they were built. This house would require very little in the way of repairs. Yes, but uh, it hasn't any electricity, Roger. Oh, so what? We could use lamps so a line could be run to the house. There. Hey, see what I tell you? There are four rooms upstairs. Oh, yes, so <laughs> there are. It's as though you'd 
been in this house before. Well, as a matter of fact, I almost have a feeling I have been. Maybe that's the reason I like it. Hey, darling, what's the matter? You've been ever so quiet since we entered the house. Don't you care for it? Oh, it's, it's, it's lovely, Roger. Only... Only what? I don't know. It, it seems unfriendly. Unfriendly? <laughs> Well, who ever heard of a house being unfriendly? And you were crazy about the place when we drove up to it. Yes, yes, I know, but that was before we entered well, it. Well, honey, it's even nicer inside than it is outside. Yes, I suppose and, so. And, and, and think of what a bargain it is at $5,000, Jay. Why, we've looked at houses that cost twice as much and weren't as nice. It, it is a bargain. But you still don't like it, do you? All right. Then we'll keep looking till we find a house we both like. Oh, nonsense, darling. Well, we, we'll never find anything nicer. Now, now that room with the southern exposure will be our bedroom, and, and that room... Oh, Jane, oh. Jane, you're wonderful. And we will be happy here, honey. I know we will. <laughs> In the weeks that followed, I was too busy with the repairs and furnishings of the house to give any thought to my misgivings. But they all returned in overwhelming force that first evening in our new home. I left Roger sitting in the study and made my way up the dark, winding staircase to our bedroom. After tossing for what seemed hours, I, I fell into a fitful sleep. Suddenly awakened to hear the clock in the hall striking the hour. It was four o'clock, and Roger's bed was empty. Quickly slipping on my robe, I left my room and started down the stairs to the study. As I reached the foot of the stairs, I stopped. Well, for, who are you? To my astonishment, I heard Roger's voice in the study. I, I slowly approached until well, I, I was at the door. Clear it. It's so difficult. The mist obscures your face. Who are you? Well, why don't you say something? Roger! What Roger, unlock this door! It's James! It's coming between us. I can hardly see you. Oh, no, don't go. Come back. Please, come back. Darling, please unlock this door. Please! Roger! Oh, oh Roger. Well, what is it, James? I was so frightened. Who are you talking to? Uh, talking to? Yes. Well, I, I don't know. I'm. I must have been dreaming. Yes, you must have been there. There isn't anyone. Roger, did... huh? there's no perfume in here. Perfume? Well, yes. Isn't it the perfume I gave you for your birthday? Oh, no, it isn't my perfume. It smells like narcissus. Yes. Darling, what were you dreaming about? Well, it, 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 it was night, and all around me was a mist. A mist so heavy I, I, I couldn't see more than a few feet. There was a woman. A woman? Yes, yes, I, I could barely make out her face and swirling mists, but it was a beautiful face most beautiful I've ever seen. How strange. Of course it was a dream. Yes, of course. We both agreed it was a dream. But in our unspoken thoughts, it was more than a dream. The next day, I entered the study several times to find Roger sitting at his desk, staring into space. The scent of Narcissus was gone. That night, Roger tossed and turned in his bed, unable to fall asleep. Just before dawn, I awoke to find his bed empty. A cold terror swept over me as I left my room and started down the stairs to the study. And then I, I heard that which I most dreaded to hear. Roger's voice. Who are you? This mist. If, if only you'd come closer. Bridge the distance between us. 
I've seen you before, haven't I? And yet, where? Yes, yes, I can see much better now. You are beautiful. Who are you? Roger! Roger, please open the door. Why are you leaving? No, 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 please don't. Come back, please, come back. Darling, let me in. Please open the door. Oh, Roger, are you all right? Huh? Uh, yes, of course I'm all right. The scent of Narcissus. Study's filled with it. Why did you wake me? You saw her again, didn't you? The Narcissus. It's her scent. You only had an awakened. Roger, what are you saying? If only she... She'd spoken to me. What are you saying? It is a dream, isn't it? It must be. I don't know. I don't know. When... When twilight comes, I... I feel her presence in the house, in this room. It's your imagination. It must be. Yes, but the scent of Narcissus, where does that come from? I don't know. I don't know, but it's evil. The house is evil. We must leave it. Leave it? No. No, no, we can't leave it. I've got to see her again. I've got to find out who she is. Roger, we must leave. I don't understand what's happening to us, but it's evil. I can feel it. No, no, I won't leave. I can't. What do you want? I thought I told you I wasn't to be disturbed. I must talk to you, make you realize that you... Tonight, Jane, she was closer to me than ever before, so close I could almost touch her. I spoke, and she started to reply, and then you knocked. Roger, what's happening to you? She's from another world, a phantom, an evil one. No, no, she isn't evil. She couldn't be. She's too beautiful. Darling, look at me. You can't let her come between us. I'm your wife. I love you. I don't want your love. Roger, listen to me. You must come away from this house. We must leave at once. No. I insist. Will you get out of here? And don't come back. I'll never leave her. As I fled from the house, Doctor, I, I could still hear him shouting. I'll never leave her. Oh, you must help me, Doctor. You must. I'll do what I can, Mrs. Barton. You... You don't think I'm losing my sanity, do you? No. That which you fear may well be. Look, there's a history to Wickford Manor, though few people are familiar with it. A history? Yes. The house was built in 1811 by Martin Wickford for his bride, Marie Duval. It was considered one of the finest houses in New England. A year later... Marie's sister, Isabel, came to live with the Wickfords. From uh, some of the old records, uh, letters, I gather she was a remarkably beautiful woman. So beautiful that Martin Wickford fell in love with her. And she with him. Then what happened? One day, while Martin was hunting in the mountains, he was killed in a fall. When his companions brought his body back to Wickford Manor, they found Marie, his wife, dead. She'd been poisoned. Poisoned? Yes. At the sight of Martin's body, Isabel went to pieces and confessed to the poisoning of her sister. But before she could be arrested, she did away with herself. In the study. In in the study? Yes. There's a quotation in the Bible to the effect that a murderer shall find no peace in the hereafter. Isabel Duval was a murderess. Then you do believe her spirit is in the house? In the years that followed the tragedy, Wickford Manor had a succession of tenants, all of whom left after a brief residence. You mean they saw her too? Well, the tenants made no claims of seeing anyone, but their fear of an unknown element in the house led to their leaving. Yes, but if the other tenants never saw her, why should Roger see her? Mrs. Barton, have you ever visited some place for the first time, had the feeling you'd seen the place before? Oh, boy. yes, but... That was imagination. Can one be sure it is imagination? Perhaps you had seen that place in the long ago as another person. As another person? Yes. 
You mean Roger, as another person, had once known Wickford Nash? How else do you account for his remembrances of things he'd never seen in this life? I don't know. Doctor, you're trying to tell me something. What is it? All I know is we must return to the manor at once. The spirit that's abroad in that house is one to be feared more than death itself. Please. Please, come closer. There's nothing to be afraid of. She's gone. Oh, please, there, there, there are only the two of us now. You... You're beautiful. You're so beautiful. We... We have... met before, haven't we? Yes. <laughs> we have met before. You spoke. I've waited so long for you, Martin. <laughs> Why, why do you call me Martin? My name is Roger. It was Martin. Oh. Then. Then? What do you mean? Look at me, Martin. Oh. Look into my eyes. Don't you remember? Yes. Yes, but where? When? Think, Martin. Oh. Think. Time is the barrier between us, but we shall overcome it. Think back into the dim past when you lived in this house and we loved each other. When... Isabel. Isabel. Yes, Martin. <laughs> Isabel. Do you remember now? Yes, yes, yes. I remember everything up to the... Up to the day I... I went hunting in the mountains. And I fell. What happened to me, Isabel? What happened to us? To our love? Don't think of that accursed day, darling. What? Think of the future. Our happiness together. Yes, yes, Isabel. Our happiness together. Just the two of us. In this house, I have waited so long for you to come back, Martin. But at last, we are together. Yes, yes, darling, forever. Roger, please, open the door. She's come Roger. back. She's come back. Isabel, don't go. <laughs> darling, don't leave me. I must, Martin. No, no, I no, must. come back. Come back, please, come back. Roger, unlock the door. What do you want? Who's he? Oh, this is Dr. Stewart, Roger. Doctor, this is my husband. What in the devil did you bring him here for? Roger, please. I, I thought perhaps he could help What do you mean, help us? I don't need anyone's help. Your wife has told me everything. My Mr. wife has quite an imagination, Doctor. Roger. Lately, she's taking to imagining all sorts of things. I'm beginning to believe she's become unbalanced. I'm not. How can you say such a thing? I wish you'd trust me, Mr. Barton. Allow me to try to help you. <laughs> I must warn you, the spirit of the woman you see in this study is an evil one. One that will lead you to disaster. I told you I don't need help from you or anyone. Now get out, both of you. Roger. Come along, Mrs. Button. All I ask is to be left alone. Oh, Roger. Roger. Please, please, don't cry, Mrs. Button. You saw him. It, it's as though he were possessed. Yes, I know. We must do something. We must. We shall. But not tonight. I must have time to think about it. But you'd better return to the village with me. No. No, I don't want to leave him in the house alone. Something might happen to him. Are you sure you want to stay? Yes. Very well. I'll return late tomorrow afternoon. When I do, we will take action. Look at her, Martin. Lying there in her bed, asleep, so defenseless. If you want me, you must get rid of her. Hurry, Martin, it is almost dawn and I must leave. There's no time to waste. Yes, 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 Isabel, yes. We can't let her come between us. I'll do as you say. Oh, who's there? Roger. 
for a moment, I was frightened. What time is it? Well, it's, it's just dawn. I... I have to do it, Jane. I have to. No, Roger, do not. I can't let you come between Isabel and myself. Not now. Not after we've found each other again. Tighter, Martin, tighter. Until she stops struggling and is still forever. <laughs> Isabel. Isabel, don't leave me. Isabel, where are you? Isabel. Oh, Roger. Come back, Isabel. Come back. Roger, can't you see what she's doing to you? Tonight she'll be back again and she won't let you fail. Isabel, no. darling, don't leave me. Now, please don't leave me, Isabel. Oh, Roger. Roger. <laughs> Then he stopped choking you, ran out of your room and down to the study? Yes. Where is he now? He's still in the study. He's been there all day. I should have known better than to have let you remain in this house last night. She knows that if he murders you, he'll join her cursed spirit forever. Oh, look, it's growing dark out. Soon she'll appear before him again. Doctor, we must do something. Last night you said you'd help And me. I will. This woman, Isabel, has been denied the peace of the grave... Because her sister's blood is on her hands. She belongs neither to the living or the dead. Only to this house. If we could get your husband to leave, it might break the spell she's cast over him. Yes, but he absolutely refuses to leave. Then we must force him to. Force him to? Yes. I can very quickly give him a hypodermic. Render him unconscious. Yes, then we could carry him away. To make sure he never returns to this house, we must burn it to the ground before we leave. Burn the yes, house? Yes, yes. Unless, of course, you don't want to. Oh, yes. Yes, we will burn it. And the evil that's in it. Then if you'll lead the way to the study. All right, Doctor. Have you the hypodermic ready? Yes. And when your husband opens the door, just gain his attention for a moment. Long enough for me to give him the hypodermic. Very well. Shall I knock now? Yes, I'm ready. Roger, open the door. I, I want to talk to you. What do you want? Why has he come back to this house? Oh, he's come to take me away, Roger. To take you away? Well, good. I'm glad to see... <coughs> what did you stick me with? What's that in your hand, Doctor? Just a hypodermic, Mr. Barton. Huh? A hypodermic? Well, why? Well, what are you up to? You're trying to take me away from this house. From her. Well, I won't go. I won't go. Do you hear? You never... Doctor, mm -hmm. quick, he's falling. I've got him, Mrs. Brown. Yes. Now, I suggest you take that lamp and smash it on the floor. Yes, let's burn the place to the ground. That's it. Now, you better help me carry your husband out of the house, Mrs. Barton. In a while, this house will be a, a mass of flame. <laughs> Gaining consciousness now, Mrs. Barton. Will well, he remember what happened? I, I don't know. I, uh, huh? Oh, hello, Jamie. Darling. I had, a, I had a terrible dream. It's all so confused. And... <laughs> Janie, darling, you're crying. <laughs> it's nothing, darling. You've been very ill, but... Now you're going to be all right. Of course. Well, who are you? He's Dr. Stewart, Roger. He's been looking after you during your illness. Oh? oh. Where, where, where am I? You're in my home, uh, Mr. Barton. Oh. Yes, darling. Our own house burned down last night. It burned down? Yes. Oh, that's too bad. Why... We only had one night in our new home. One night? Yeah. Oh, yes, of course, Roger. Well, uh, Mrs. Barton, in spite of the loss of your home, I think you were very fortunate. There are things uh, far worse than fire. Yes, Doctor. And I can never thank you enough for breaking the bridge between the past and the present. What, <laughs> what are you two talking about? Oh, nothing, darling. Nothing at all. Oh, 
for us. Mm-hmm. Oh, darling, you've been humming that all day. <laughs> well, I'm just glad to be out of a sick bed and on my way to California. <laughs> Look, we just crossed the state line into Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Well, we've come almost you know, 600 miles since dawn. Yeah, it's getting dark. Mm-hmm. Don't you think we, we ought to stop now for the night? Anything you say, darling. Yeah, let's stop at the next motel. Hmm? All right. I guess I better turn my headlights on. Mm. Oh, darling, I've never been so happy. Roger. Hmm? What? Do you... Do you smell something? Yes, it's good country air. No, I... I don't mean that. Jenny, what's wrong with you? Don't you smell it? Smell what? Oh, oh you mean... That, that perfume? Yes. Oh, it seems familiar. Yes. What is it? Narcissus. Narcissus. Wasn't that the... said in the study that first evening? Yes. She's in the car, isn't she, Roger? She's followed us. Roger, answer me. What? Roger. Roger, you mustn't listen to her. She's trying to come between us. Darling, look at me. Look at me. Why are you slowing down? No. No. of the mysterious travel again. Did you enjoy our trip? Poor Janie. There are some ghosts you just can't escape from. Strangely enough, as Roger Barton was being hanged some six months later uh, for his wife's murder, everyone noticed a strange scent of perfume about the gallows. Some people said afterward it was the scent of Narcissus. I trust that if you ever see a house for the first time and it looks familiar, you'll have the good sense to turn and flee. Perhaps, perhaps a ghost out of your past awaits in that house. A ghost that's been waiting for you a long time, and he's... Go- oh, you have to get off here. I'm sorry. I'm sure we meet again. I take this same train every week at this same time. You have just heard the mysterious traveler. Now you can follow other tense and exciting adventures of a mysterious traveler in the current issue of the Mysterious Traveler magazine now available. In our cast were Brian Rayburn and Lyle Sudo. Maurice Tarplin starred in the title role. Music under the direction of Emerson Buckley, composed by Richard DuPage. This program came to you from New York. <laughs>